Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa. In today's video, we are going to talk about Android open source source structure. Now, uh, we talk about Android open source a bit uh, in previous videos. Uh, we gave introductory examples and in introductory information, but we didn't go into uh, some of the details such as the source structure. So in today's video, we are going to talk about this. When you extract Android open source source, uh, you will see an output such as the one I have at the left side. Uh, this is the output of a tree command and uh, you can see that Android open source has uh, many folders, let's say. And in these folders, actually, we will do, do the mapping to the architecture. So to the left, uh, sorry, to the right, we have the architecture that we described earlier uh, in the videos and at the left we have the Android open source source. So um, I try to draw some, some folders and try to do the mapping but we will go one by one and uh, I would also try to show you uh, these folders from an example uh, source. So the example source I will use is from Asus Tinkerboard 2. Asus Tinkerboard 2 is, is a great board that, that I love, uh, uh, primarily because it supports Android open source. Usually Android open source boards are too costly and uh, even if it is Qualcomm, then it is impossible to get, uh, get a, a generic board, uh, you know, without making a deal with the Qualcomm. Uh, therefore, this is a rock chip uh, based board, uh, Asus Tinkerboard 2, and uh, we can use this as an example. Okay, so we can begin now. We will start from the bottom of the architecture and work our way uh, towards upward. So, uh, first thing that we will deal with is Linux kernel. But before I begin, uh, let me show you uh, what we have in the directory structure. So you can see here I extracted Android open source and here you can see the folders. Okay, so let's go back and uh, start to explain. So let's start by uh, the kernel. So kernel is uh, located in the root. It is almost same as the Linux kernel. You can see from the subdirectories, but of course uh, it has many changes involved. Uh, some modules also included. Uh, I gave uh, some brief introduction in previous videos. Here uh, you can search for the device trees here and also uh, if you go to the configs folder, you can uh, simply find the uh, kernel configuration files. Next up, uh, after the Linux kernel in the architecture that we gave at the right side comes the Linux native daemons and libraries. These are what make up the user space in a Linux uh, typically and in Android these are located in the external. So the external folder will involve Linux libraries and Linux services we can say. So if we decide to port anything Linux to Android what we will have to do is uh, just open up this external folder and uh, you know, uh, create a folder uh, with the with the correct Android BP or Android MK file. Uh, then yeah, we will have to port it basically inside that. Here, I I hope you can catch some of the names uh, that you are familiar with Linux. So next up, we have the hardware abstraction layer, uh, which is uh, unique to the Android. Uh, it is located in the hard hardware folder. In hardware folder, you will find two things. So the first is the libraries themselves. These libraries are used to communicate with the uh, drivers, the, the kernel site. Uh, here, just I'm opening an, an example. 
and uh, so how these are triggered is by making use of the interfaces the, the HIDL interface and these are located in the hardware interfaces folder in this one so for example if we go to the audio uh, there will be versions of of them of the libraries and uh, yeah you can see here uh, in in let's say HIDL naming the the function descriptions these will be invoked either from the framework side or the Android system services side in order to communicate with the drivers. Okay. Next up we have the Android runtime. So uh, we don't go into details, but just to, just to give example, this is the art folder. Android runtime where it is located and we have the Dalvik here typically we don't need to make any notifi any uh, modification in those folders let's go back okay next up we have the Android system services Android system services are typically located in uh, system so if it is if it is android uh, you know android standard uh, system services it is located in system if it is something that we want to add uh, we can put it in a vendor for example so vendor is uh, somewhat uh, what we add and system is used for uh, what google added so we gave example to android system services before um, so let's try to catch some names here uh, for example this volume daemon this is this is used for uh, you know uh, processing the fs tab file and you know uh, managing the partitions basically let's check the android bp file uh, yeah here is the binary that makes up the volume daemon service here is the update engine update engine is used to simply update the android partitions uh, so this we we make use of the update engine uh, while we're doing ota over the over the air updates so let's search what else uh, there is the core folder under the core folder there are some libraries and there are some core uh, system services so this adb uh, i'm sure you've heard about it this is the android debugging bridge uh, daemon so whenever you connect uh, to the android device from your computer this adbd uh, daemon is utilized so this is also important okay next up we have the frameworks so let's go into the directory here it's also located in the root folder typically here uh, android frameworks will be located and uh, also related libraries will be located so here if we select the camera here uh, we can see the deep camera and we can see the camera server for example so these frameworks are utilized by Android uh, applications and Android services. If you go into the Android BP file, uh, we can see the camera server here and also the linked hardware abstraction library. So in our architectural diagram, we show previously that Android, framework, uh, Android frameworks uh, communicate with the hardware abstraction layers and also of course under system services are able to communicate with the hardware abstraction layers in order to communicate with the uh, Linux kernel uh, here uh, we can see this uh, concrete example that camera server uh, utilizes this uh, camera hall so camera uh, hardware abstraction library if we take a look at the architecture the last thing we see uh, beside the Android API is the applications so these applications are located in the packages folder 
So if you go to the packages, we can see services and applications uh, subdirectories and in apps directory, you will see the typical Android application names such as gallery, contacts, calendar, email and so on. So for example, if you go into the gallery, uh, gallery BP file, you can see that it is integrated in the build system here. If you go to the services, you will see some custom services. Uh, this, this car service is important if you are dealing with, an, uh, with a system that is targeting cars. Basically, all the APK files are located in the packages. So besides, uh, besides the folders that are concerning the Android architecture that I show in the right side, there are also other folders. One example is the out folder. When you finish the Android open source build, out folder will be generated. And if you go uh, some folders below, you can see the image files are created here. And also all the source uh, sources are built and uh, you know executables and uh, shared libraries are also involved. Here, the image files that I'm showing is what makes up the Android root file system. Next up, we have the CTS. CTS is important. It is a, let's say, a compatibility test suite. And it is what makes an Android device, Android certified device. If you're dealing with a series project, you will always uh, be required to pass these CTS tests. So if some test is failing, you can go into this directory and search for the test uh, steps. That's why I think uh, it is important to mention this folder. Next up, we have the build folder. Build folder is important also because it involves how Android sources built. It has the source for several build systems, especially the the newest uh, song build system and also the make, so the GNU make. Next up we have uh, the last one, bootable. Bootable involves the bootloader uh, source. Actually, it's not like the primary bootloader, but it is uh, something like the little kernel. It will also involve the sources for the fast boot agent. Okay, so I believe we are finished. I think it was important to mention this, uh, you know, source structure to uh, Android architecture mapping uh, because some people confuse it too. In order to make these videos a little bit shorter, uh, I'm always doing these videos a bit rushed, but if there is anything at all uh, that is not clear, please rewatch the video and uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Uh, that being said, uh, we can we can wrap this up. So thank you again so much for watching. If you like the content, please uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.